No, she said there's a pause. Good evening, Millis. And thank you so much for tuning in on what is a surprisingly snowy day. My name is Lauren Barnes, and you know that I am a longtime neighbor, but I am also uh, currently the chair of the Millis Select Board. I am joined here this evening to bring you uh, the latest information that the leaders of the Millis Emergency Management Agency have for our community. So you will be hearing our voices as we uh, go through some information that we will also post to the town website. So in our company and whose voices you will be hearing tonight are Chief Rick Barrett, who directs our emergency command and is our fire chief, John McVeigh, our director of the Millis Board of Health, Chief Chris Sapphire from the Millis Police Department, and our town administrator, Michael Gazinski. This evening, we're going to cover the questions that we know you have. What is it that we need to know about symptoms? What are the policies that Millis has invoked with respect to access to public spaces? What town services are continuing to function and how do we access those? The very real burning question of financial relief and concerns, how you can offer help and where we will be continuing to provide information and updates. And with that, I'm going to cede the floor to my colleagues. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon. My name is John McVeigh, the Director of Public Health Millis. Um, as you can see from the slide that's up there now uh, regarding COVID-19, uh, the best information you can get for COVID-19 is, is seen here, the coronavirus.gov. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you're getting information from sites that are accurate, uh, Department of Public Health, CDC. Um, those are the sites you want to be focusing on. Uh, just to let you know, uh, as of the 23rd today, uh, 2020, there have been no positives, no positive cases found in Millis to date. Just to let you know as well that uh, there are 646 in the state of Massachusetts, but none thus far in Millis. Um, for the next slide, um, I guess this could be both myself and the uh, Chief Barrett as well, uh, uh, symptoms, uh, and I'll, I'll go through it really quick, and then if the Chief wants to add to that, that'd be, that'd be great. You know, uh, typically the symptoms are similar to the flu, you know, high fever, tiredness, uh, dry cough, um, and I think the, the key uh, to, to what might be a, a problem in, in COVID is the uh, cough mixed with a shortness of breath. That's when I think things are, uh, from a respiratory end, start to get... Uh, problematic. Uh, and I don't know if the chief wanted to add anything to that in the medical realm. Um. Sure. Uh, this is Chief uh, Rick Barrett with the uh, Fire Department and your Emergency Management Director. Um, so some of the things with uh, the high fever, the number that they keep coming up with is 100.4. Any fever in that range um, for a period of time, um, you should contact your doctor. That is the biggest outtake they want everybody to understand. You should contact your doctor by phone, explain your symptoms, um, and then follow the procedures that they will uh, advise you to take. If we go to the next slide, you'll see if for some reason um, the symptoms become so bad that you, you feel the need to be transported by ambulance, we have a few requests. You make the call by 911. And when the dispatcher um, answers the phone call, they're going to have some questions for you. Please provide them with as much information about your symptoms as possible. It's very important for the safety of first responders to know uh, how long you've had the symptoms, what the symptoms consist of. More importantly, if you've had any exposure to somebody um, testing positive with COVID. Again, we, uh, the fire department and police department will arrive, we'll wear proper protective equipment, um, and we'll be able to transport you to the hospital. But the big takeaway with this is we can only transport one patient. Uh, no family members are allowed in the ambulance, no friends, just simply the patient um, for the safety of the first responders and for yourself and your family members. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, this next slide, uh, protecting yourself and preventing the spread of the disease. 
as we all know, we've been hearing uh, you know, quite, quite a, a few times on the national media, the state as well, uh, wash your hands. That's a key, big key. Um, keep a uh, distance of about six feet from people as much as possible. Social distancing uh, is a good thing to practice for any type of infectious disease. Uh, try not to touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth after touching surfaces, uh, such as doorknobs and things of that nature. You know, disinfecting areas like that when you can would be helpful. Uh, when you cough, uh, cough into your elbow. Uh, you know, seek medical attention if necessary with, uh, if you have difficulty breathing. Um, and follow the directions, again, of the CDC and medical advice from your physician uh, if you become ill um, or, you know, you want to know what precautions to take in the future. And I don't know if Rick wanted to or Chief Barrett wanted to add to that. Um, just really monitor your symptoms. Monitor the symptoms of your family. Um, the best way to prevent the spread is to catch it early, um, you know, and that's where um, social distancing really plays a big part in it. Um, if we can prevent uh, the spread uh, from one person to another, um, that is our goal. Uh, so we would ask you to, uh, you know, please follow the governor's uh, recommendation of social distancing. All right. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about, this is Mike Kaczynski, I'm the town administrator, is uh, public spaces in Millis. Um, we've had to uh, close a number of those spaces in the community uh, from March 24th, as the, as the slide shows, um, from March 24th to April 7th, um, and until further notice, uh, the Millis parks, playgrounds, rec courts, and community centers will be closed. Um, and you can consult the different websites for the status of the different takeout restaurants, gas stations, and shopping hours um, uh, online for those private businesses. So we recommend you do that before you head out. Um, the next item is uh, for uh, town services. Uh, we have had to uh, have some adaptations uh, so we can have minimal contact. Uh, or suspend contact for the safety of residents. Um, and uh, we'll start with the talking a little bit about the police department, and I will turn it over to Chief Safari. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so in light of coronavirus, we've made some changes to our daily operations at the Millicent Police Department. Um, our lo lobby is closed for general business. We ask that any members from the community with general business call the police department and we'll handle it over the phone. By all means, if it is an emergency, the lobby is open. We've also received numerous requests about and inquiries about license to carry renewals and new license to carry applications. For now, all, renewal, all renewals will be completed by email or mail only. New applications will take them and we will um, schedule an appointment at a later date. Unfortunately, we can't have folks in here for new applications to go through the background process along with the fingerprint because it, it requires officers to be in close proximity of the applicants. Uh, in addition, there's no solicitor permits being issued. They've all been suspended in the town of Millis. There should be no solicitors uh, in your neighborhoods if there are please contact the police department. Uh, in the event you need the police to respond to your house, if the circumstances uh, allow, we're gonna ask the homeowners to come and meet us outside the home rather than us going inside the home. Requests for crash reports and records requests, they are gonna be all handled by email and you will be submitting your request to Sergeant Nicholas Molesky. Um, also, we've had uh, an onslaught of inquiries to the Millis Police Leadership Camp. Unfortunately, that is on hold. Um, we're just waiting to see how this whole, whole epidemic plays out before we move forward with any dates. Thank you, Chief. Um, I think the Fire Chief's going to talk next about some of the uh, protocols uh, that are 
being instituted for the uh, fire department. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so the fire department lobby is open um, and is disinfected multiple times a day to allow for the public to come in. Um, we do ask that if you have any symptoms or require um, evaluation, to not come into the station, to call 911, and we can evaluate you um, in the parking lot. Uh, with that said, uh, home inspections and uh, real estate uh, inspections um, have been postponed until after the epidemic. Today, uh, Governor Baker uh, put out a uh, an allowance that as long as both parties are in agreement, the smoke detector inspection for the sale of a home can be done 90 days after um, the emergency uh, is lifted, and that has to be an agreement between both parties. Additionally, we won't be doing any uh, oil burner, gas, or um, any other inspections at this time, and we will not be doing station tours, uh, station visits, um, or uh, installing car seats. Uh, we hope you understand this during this time, but we are always open for questions. If anybody would like to call the fire department with a question, we'd be more than happy to answer it. Um, this time of year is uh, big for our burning permits. And again, we've suspended walk-in um, requirements to get a burning permit. You can call by phone and speak with the on-duty members and they will issue a permit over the phone to allow you to burn um, yard waste in your Thank you, Chief. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, the town hall. Um, we did have to close recently close the town hall as a result of the COVID-19. Uh, at this point, the building is restricted to employee access only, um, and uh, we do have a skeleton crew working in the building um, that is able to, on at most regular business times, is able to answer calls and to uh, reply to emails. Um, transfer station is uh, still open on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, the DPW meter readings can still take place. Uh, you'd have to call the number uh, <clears throat> on the screen, 376-5424. Uh, we, the senior center is continuing. Although the center itself is closed, the Meals on Wheels uh, program continues. And if you need any uh, assistance, uh, you may still call the Council on Aging at 376-7051. Um, just to touch a little bit upon the schools, in um, communicating with the superintendent of schools, um, uh, they wanted to make it known that um, updates will be going out related uh, for any school-related items. Uh, the listserv for updates is millisps.org, um, and they have the pickup meals at... Uh, S. Fallon at millisps.org. Um, the online learning uh, active uh, is active, and um, if anyone has device needs, um, they can contact the principal. And Millis is currently coordinating with all state, school, health, um, and superintendent associations for decision making. And would like to thank all the Millis residents for their patience. Um, and now I'd like to turn it back to. Uh, uh, Loring Barnes, the chair, to discuss a little bit um, about questions um, for residents and employers. Yes, I want everybody to know that we have tremendous awareness and empathy for the financial fallout from this situation beyond everyone's control. And as the information will be posted, um, we have been in constant communication with state legislators as well as economic development officers to uh, advocate for any type of relief. Right now, businesses are aware that there are some loan packages, and yes, we understand that that is in fact a debt opportunity um, and not aid, which is what people are asking for. So we hear you, we understand this. Um, however, we also have to follow the law, so unfortunately, um, since we have to uh, do that, we cannot unilaterally as a town uh, implement uh, tax relief measures at the local level. 
That is not to say that we are not having constant conversations with our state uh, legislators and should legislative action be forthcoming, which we certainly hope it will be, then uh, that will be the time when we will be in a better position to look at the big picture and see what it is that we can do. In the meantime, um, our tax bills to include uh, state excise tax for cars uh, happen to be due today. And there isn't anything at this moment to change those due dates. Um, we, you can make payments uh, safely by doing so online, uh, by driving to the town hall secure drop box uh, singularly and dropping it inside, or of course, uh, by using the mail. So we do understand that these are trying times and we also want to thank those uh, small businesses, uh, in particular restaurants, who have been able to revamp their operations to provide takeout options, which people can still do safely, um, to thank the gas stations uh, for making everything clean and safe. And in particular, we would like to um, acknowledge the people, the employees on the front lines at both Roach Brothers and CVS, um, for helping people in their time of need, and in particular um, for any shopping um, special hours that are specifically intended for seniors and for those residents who would be self-defined as immunocompromised. And we do ask everybody's patience and indulgence to understand that there are people who have it worse than you, and that is the intention of those types of provisions. Um, and yes, you can help, and I'm going to offer it to my colleagues uh, to indicate to you how best um, for people to step forward in this time of need. Hi, uh, this is John, uh, Board of Health. Uh, from my end, what you can do to help is to, uh, from a public health standpoint, is to protect the most vulnerable population, the elderly. That's the population we want to, uh, and uh, immunocompromised, people who maybe have cancer treatments, things of that nature. That's the population we definitely want to make sure is protected during this pandemic. Um, they're at high risk, uh, people with respiratory diseases and things of that nature. So if you can refrain from visiting people that are in a high risk category um, or taking special precautions with that group, it'd be uh, uh, very advisable at this stage. Um, I didn't know if the, uh, Chief Barrett had anything to add to that, but. Hello? Chief? Yeah. So first and foremost, um, we have to say uh, we've seen a great community stepping up and trying to help each other. And I think that's the most important thing um, is to continue to do that and protect uh, the community that is at the highest risk, uh, like uh, John was saying. Um, also, um, as much as we appreciate, um, you know, baked goods and gifts at the station, at this time we just can't accept anything that's baked, and we can't accept any mask or anything that are homemade. Um, we do need, um, as everybody in public safety does, including our nurses um, at hospitals and our doctors. Um, uh, surgical mask, N95 mask. They're on a shortage. Um, if you know a nurse, you know a firefighter or a police officer, you know, and you can get your hands on some surgical mask, they would greatly appreciate it. And please, again, follow uh, the governor's order with the social distancing, and, uh, you know, we'll get through this as quick as possible. So just to... Um this is Mike Kaczynski, the town administrator. Just to follow up, um, uh, if, uh, if if you're looking for information, uh, we recommend that you uh, look at millis.org, um, the town's website. Um, for those that have signed up for listservs, you can and also look to sign up for the different listservs associated with the town. Um, for millisps.org, for the schools, uh, Millis Community, Community Media, and the Millis Fire Department, those are all avenues, um, and I believe that the police department as well, those are all avenues to um, uh, go to get additional information, and we encourage you to seek that information um, uh, if you have any questions. So I'll turn it over to John to talk, just to sum up again, um, the status in town, and, and then we're going to wrap up. 
Yes, uh, it, just to reiterate uh, from before, uh, as of today, March 23rd, 2020, Millis has no positive cases. Um, and it's important to realize that with the measures that we're um, enacting here, the governor's enacted, uh, they can help us stay in that direction uh, as much as possible. So if, you know, you keep these, these rules at hand, uh, I think we can, uh, we can get through, through this very well. Um, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, if Millis takes action and it, it, it abides by these, these rules and regs, uh, we'll be fine. Thank you, John. Um, so um, the last slide we have is just, uh, again, a list of the different uh, ways that uh, citizens and Millis can, can get information uh, that is, that is uh, specific to Millis. There, again, as the uh, health director stated, there are other avenues through the CDC website and the Department of um, Public Health at the state level that has information. Um, we uh, encourage all citizens to stay connected and stay informed um, and, uh, and practice these protocols um, for the, your safety and the safety of your neighbors. So we ask you all to, uh, again, try as hard as you can to follow these recommendations and, um, and stay safe. So we'd like to thank you for your uh, attention here. Um, and again, you can continue to look on the town's website for uh, continuing updates uh, as we move forward. So thank you very much. Good night.